background. Um, close your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale. Again, deep breath. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Relax your shoulders, your chest. Visualize the stress going down your arms, out through your fingertips. Gently breathing in and out through your nose, relax your torso, your hips. Allow the stress to go down your legs, out through your toes. And you're completely relaxed, eyes still closed, gently breathing in and out through your nose. Visualize the air going in and out through your nose. That life force that keeps you alive. And when other thoughts come into your mind, allow them to just float away like clouds in the sky and go back to visualizing the air going in and out through your nose. And slowly open your eyes. And my closing thoughts for today. Help others quietly without expecting gratitude or rewards. Let the healing power of your spirit run through your hand as you reach to touch another. But say nothing to the person you help. Learn to give invisibly. Namaste. May the divine in me honor the divine in you. Thank you. It's me. Okay. Okay, good morning, everyone. It's me. It's uh, like the whole Twitter thing that's happening. <laughs> good morning. Yeah. Welcome to Empower Yourself Monday. And it is a Monday. Uh, we're <laughs> and this is our second Monday of March of 2023. And I'm thrilled that to um, get Sherry on the line because Sherry here is, um, I was able to sit in her as a, her co-host. Her music is so incredible that Facebook, actually, because I live streamed it, actually thought that I did a copyright infringement. So it, li it listed all her, she was so good that they thought it was a, an, an album of some kind or someone else's music that's passed away from a long time ago. So, um, I always like kind of share, I didn't know you know about that, but um, your, your music was so good that I, I couldn't believe that the algorithm states that I am the, um, that I took some music. So, um, but before we start, um, Sherry, can you tell our listeners a little bit about yourself and, and also how long have you been studying music and also um, you're also an author. Yeah, so my name is Sherry Grant. I am a concert pianist and cellist and poet from New Zealand, but originally from Taiwan. 
I've been studying music since I was three. Actually, I started learning the piano when I was three. And then I went to piano school um, since when I was six in Taiwan. And then when I came to New Zealand later to study university, I carry on with music performance. Actually, I was actually doing cello because I had to choose between cello and piano. It's only one choice to be made. And you, at that time, you were not allowed to do a conjoint degree with other papers because, um, yeah, for a musician performing um, as a career, you have to focus. And um, about two years and eight months ago, so right when we came out of um, the COVID um, yeah, lockdown, the first lockdown in New Zealand, I started writing poetry. That was, um... can you actually hear me? Yeah, we can hear you. Uh, yeah, Twitter is having a little um, issue, but today, but no, we can hear you perfectly, actually. That's great, because um, I'm actually, I'm hooked up to my mixer, but um, I think Twitter probably does not recognize that. <laughs> I tried different microphones, but it doesn't seem to be using the microphone, just using the inbuilt. Never mind. <laughs> it does improve the sound a little bit using my mixer. Okay. No, you sound perfect. Um, some, a lot of the stuff got redone or something. I don't know. It just kind of Twitter goes in and out, but um, yeah. it, it, it gets a moment. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, and I about a year ago I started um, on Clubhouse and starting to play solo piano stuff. Before that, I was mostly a collaborative um, pianist, and I play a lot of chamber music. And actually, I only just got back from um, the Wellington Fringe Festival about two two weeks ago, and <laughs> we just found out recently like that we got three nominations at that festival. So that was really cool. For the best words, so uh, we had a poet, a Maori poet, her name is Sha Marie, and a violist, Donald Maurice, and and me playing the piano, and we were performing a piece written by Anthony Ritchie, almost an hour long. So we we did um, five performances in Wellington, and yeah, we're bringing that to well part of it to to Thailand in June this year and I'm going to do some um, solo recitals after that in a couple more countries in Asia afterwards. It's very exciting. Are you, are you coming to the US? I think I ask you this every single time we talk. <laughs> I'm coming to the US? I'm not sure this year. I mean if I get an opportunity but um, so far the opportunities in Asia for this year so or maybe I can find an opportunity because I've only just heard about this so, uh, about a week ago that I am going. So <laughs> very quickly, we need to organize the tour. Yeah, um, you know, we have the Miami Symphony. Uh, it's so funny. They follow me for years. And I, like, I, I actually interviewed them. I remember a long time ago with Maria de Los Angeles, who is my, she's known as Ice Queen Maria. And we always cover anything that's culture and art, especially from Miami. So mm -hmm. they were part of it. And I, so I always retweet their stuff, but I always think that, I don't know why, but I just think you should be like, come be a guest, you know, pianist or something. But but you, you do more than that though. Um, like, you know, you, you have incredible gifted children that you've been coaching. Um, did you want to share a little bit about that in your book and in your poetry is wonderful, but you're not even, I'm not even, you, you're doing a lot. I mean, last, last time, let me rephrase that. But you're, uh, I always ask you, are you doing NFTs? Are you doing any of that stuff? And um, right now you're just uh, mostly on social media. Am I right? Correct. As yeah, far as your yeah, marketing. NFTs, so like a new beast. I haven't actually really, I'm, I, I've been looking. <laughs> But I don't know quite how, because it seems like there's, yeah, there's always like the copyright and everything else. And I was told that you have to set up some sort of infrastructure. So I have four children. The youngest one is Zoe. She's the one who does the most things with me. Because um, since I started writing two years and eight months ago, she was there actually the whole time we did it together. 
So we published a book called Bad Girl. Well, that one I still need to make available internationally because we only <laughs> published in New Zealand. And um, Zoe and I, we also started, oh, she's just turned nine. We started um, two journals together. One is called Haiku Zoo Journal. That's for poets 20 years old and younger sub to submit. And um, yeah, we published the first issue although there's always like uh, permissions to get from parents. And uh, we, yeah, we, we also publish with all the translations when we can. There were submissions from Japan and from Italy, from, um, was it Argentina probably? And uh, yeah, and, and Eastern Europe. So we had Croatian and Polish, yeah, all sorts of languages. And, and Zoe's when I helped translate into Chinese so, yeah it's a very vibrant very interesting journal and um, also there's another journal called Renning Renge because we were big promoters of this form called Renge which is um, was invented 30 years ago by well actually 31 now by Gary Gay in um, America and um, it's a, a shorter form uh, like the Japanese Renku and uh, collaborative so the the poets say write together usually back and forth and two or three or even six people you can do it a solo ring as well so that's all a little bit of fun yeah we like writing and my other um, my other kids i have well they're all older now the eldest one is turning 17. <laughs> I can't believe that. I just, just started in university and doing one music paper, but mostly, um, yeah, she said she wants to be a doctor. So, yeah. And they all play instruments. The eldest one plays the oboe, and the next one is the son. He plays the clarinet, and the next one plays the, the bassoon. And so little Zoe plays the flute. So I've kind of got a small woodwind ensemble here even though I was I was aiming for a string quartet but <laughs> that didn't quite happen nobody wanted to stick with strings yeah so have you guys all played together and create a song or are you Not just yet actually we have actually started asking composers to write for us and uh, um in May because this is May is the uh, uh, music month in New Zealand so I'm planning for the May concert to be a New Zealand music but for the woodwind mostly and then I'll play some solo piano music by New Zealand composers as well actually that's going to be my theme for not the woodwind part because obviously I'm not playing my kids I'll be playing uh, mostly uh, New Zealand music for my tour in Asia in June can you let me live stream that for you so you can do the Twitter spaces and uh, then I'll live stream it for you. I can give you, it can go into your YouTube channel. We can use my Restream account because I can give it to you. I can give you the link to the actual live stream and then we can make it like pretty, you know, like the background to represent New yeah. Zealand and then that stream itself. So be fun. Sure. This way you don't have to worry about it and you can just mm -hmm. handle your um, Twitter live and then I can sit like, like I did last time when I, when you did it. Mm -hmm. It came out really nice, by the way. It got a lot of views. I don't know if you've ever got a chance to listen to it. The one that I, well, I uh, live stream for you. I don't normally listen back because I'm always I like, don't either. new content. Yeah, But actually I'm going to start recording because I've got all these equipment at home, right? And yeah, maybe sell some CDs and things. <laughs> I haven't actually, I haven't put anything up on Spotify or Apple Music yet. But the, yeah, people were always asking, where can I find your music? Where can I find your music? Well, <laughs> so far it's just like YouTube and you know, all these social medias. I've got some concerts recorded on, on there. And the latest one was uh, playing French music, all Sati, Eric Sati music. It's um, a lot of fun. <laughs> I love French music. Yeah. I don't know. I, lo I love that kind of stuff. I think it could be my from my background and my culture too. So, but but I find that um, for musicians and composers and creators, it's like the per perfect time that there's so much, there's so much to you to choose from. But then you can't really 
choose all of them because it's too much to go do. So how do you um, figure out as far as how you, how you, like you were in clubhouse because of the um, doing social audio because of the pandemic and everything. And then you're, you're, I met you through um, Twitter spaces. So, and, and how has that um, changed for you as far as your social network and, um, creating content and, and also being a mom because I love the fact that you host concert and you bring your children into it and you're, you're sharing with the world but how is that for you as far as doing all that I mean that's a lot going on I mean this is like what I call today's woman she's you know working composing creating but also you know she's also the the, the caretaker you know she cares for her children but, but she brings them on but tell me about that past because I, because I find it really interesting because you know when in the early days for myself personally I when I joined women communication in 2008 I was just so empowered by women in communication you know and we celebrate 114 years this next month but then I always think about all the women that have gone through over the years and what they, you know, so many um, hats we had to carry. And then I look at the, and here we are in 2023, you know, we just finished the pandemic and, and especially for New Zealand, you guys were locked down quite a bit. But how, how were you able to handle all that, Sherry? There's, that was a lot going on for you. Yeah, I think that's actually what's keeping me sane. You know, being a mom, it's very stressful. But actually, I... I just like doing all these things that are outside of my mom duties. <laughs> and yeah, it just adds a lot of fun to, to life, really. Because if, almost every day I write a poem, at least one poem. There was um, one time I gave myself the challenge of writing 100 poems in three days. <laughs> but that's like haiku. So I was able to do short form poems very quickly. Uh, we were away on holiday and I was thinking, oh, what else can I do? <laughs> it's like, I have no more chores to do here. So <laughs> I'm not writing a lot. And about 25 of them actually went to the very, well, I mean, all of them I submitted, about 25 got published. So that was not pretty, pretty good. It was not bad. <laughs> good track record because um, I submit to journals a lot, especially the short form journals, and I get published a lot so far. I've written well, very close to four thousand poems in the two and a yeah, it's a three thousand eight hundred something, almost fifty. Um, yeah, a lot of them have been published. Maybe four hundred, uh, over four hundred, four hundred and fifty, maybe. So, wow, I, uh, over seventy I, I, journals, different journals. <laughs> so wow, I didn't realize that. That wow. That's you know, and then and then here's we have Graciela too. Um, Graciela is is a, a author, poet, coach, but um, she's actually we're actually yeah, doing something together next month in honor of her birthday. She's coming out with her book too, so I'm so excited about that. And so she can share with us too. Because she, Sherry, I like I am in awe because I didn't realize you published that like a lot. Like, like you need to you need to be in my metaverse, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> I need to have you sit in yeah, my coffee I mean, shop and read to us, <laughs> and we can stream yeah, it out into the world. Well, it's just the technicality tec tec of actually publishing. Yeah, well, at the moment, what I can do is self-publish, but I suppose I can send stuff to publishers. I'm actually currently writing. I'm. I'm all. Oh yeah, I forgot to mention that I organize a lot of festivals. Last year was um, the Scriabin Festival. My favorite composer classical music composer alexander scrapping russian but um i gave him a 150th birthday uh present was a, a whole festival for his yeah birth year last year and that went really quite uh, well i worked together with the scrapping society of america and actually actually they invited me onto the board so i'm the only non-american on the board i think <laughs> And yeah, we did a three-day festival. That was my third festival. My first festival, I started doing all these things. Before that was just children, children for many years. Um, before that, I, my festival was in 2019. So coming from um, no zero concerts that year, I actually organized 14 concerts and I played t t in 12 of them. <laughs> Invited, um, actually my first concert back to the stage was I invite for that 
I invited the principal violist from the Met, so the Metropolitan Opera Orchestra in New York. So we performed three concerts together in New Zealand. So that was kind of the start back <laughs> on stage for me. And then from then on, I just started playing more. But um, when I found the social media and I, I found an opportunity to, or excuse to play more because I like putting programs together and um, it's a lot of fun devising this and you know like um, we always call the um, Kiwis we call ourselves Kiwis New Zealanders and we have the DIY spirit so <laughs> I like putting things together myself and um, yeah basically promote it's it's not easy yeah it's very hard to convince people to actually come to classical concerts in New Zealand or I, I suppose anywhere in the world it's just we're a minority kind of a niche but um, yeah it's very enjoyable you just inspired me to get the Miami I'm gonna I'm gonna email them because we want you to come back on with them and I'd like to get some uh, and then we have I have the songs of birds. I think I introduced you. He plays the piano, but he mm -hmm. does it with the NFT twist to it. And I love because you know I myself personally, when I was younger, I love opera. And then I went from opera, I grew, I, and then and then I went to the symphony, and I got a little bit into that too. But it, the music itself, depending on how I feel, right? Because I'll play something that's that would like inspire me to write and then i'll play something that would just you know make me inspire me to stop and breathe for a second so um i think music is incredible no matter what you like but i think it also not all one size fits all am i correct sherry because i think everybody loves music um either from what they were taught or for me sometimes it brings back nostalgia so yeah. So, so when you pick up your music you want to play, does it come to you or do, do you just hear something and you go, oh, I'm going to play this? No, sometimes or I just hear, um, you know, I, I listen to other great pianists and I say, oh, I'm so jealous. I want to be able to play this. And then I learn it and I can. So I learn things quite fast. <laughs> at, at the start, I had only about a less than a week each time because I have to think about what to play. And every every week on Clubhouse, I put on different concerts. That went on for a while until I got oh, too, <laughs> too busy. And then to, with, especially with my writing and um, yeah, and all these uh, the activities because not just writing by myself, I'm actually, Zoe and I, we give online workshops. Actually, there's another one due. I have to start organizing it. We, we run um, two Renge workshops, actually four, but I taught two each time, um, twice a year. So, and the first one, I, I saw somebody doing something, um, poetry, <laughs> uh, a workshop, but it wasn't a Renge one uh, for um, Moon Festival. So that was like two years ago. And then and then I thought, well, what, I'll, I'll do one too. <laughs> And then, so we just started because we we were yeah it's just so much fun writing together and you learn so much from other poets and it really sharpens your uh, writing style just like and and talking with them yeah we just become friends on a different level it's not just like talking with them it's writing with them you get to know how how they think and you learn about different cultures too so I've written like. Oh, I actually, that was really funny when, when I only just started writing Renge maybe for a week or, yeah, or, or 10 days. Oh, very new anyway to this uh, poetry form. I got invited to give, um, present a workshop, a virtual, uh, at the vir virtual conference of, uh, at the, um, yeah, um, Haiku Society of America. So that was two years ago and I didn't even really know. So, and that was due to happen like a month later. So within a month, I, maybe a month of, and a half, I of notice I got, <laughs> I quickly wrote with 50 poets and yeah, came up with 50 Renge. And after that, I, I wrote hundreds and yeah, just the last, um, just this month, I think two, um, two Renge by me and Zoe. Uh, we yeah got published at two different journals. It's a lot of fun. Usually I send in 
a Chinese translation as well. So yeah, it's a little bit more unusual to see Chinese translation, but uh, yeah, in the short form journal. But uh, yeah, I, I like. I like the way that they are very inclusive. I, I love the haiku community. It's so warm and very welcoming. I love that. Oh my gosh. And then, you know, we have Graciela here. I'd love for her to speak about this too, because you and Graciela are like, you guys need to be in the same stage together. Um, we both, <laughs> you guys are almost alike, but yet quite different, but yet like the same type of passion. So. Graciela, good morning. How are you? And thank you for being here, like always. I really appreciate you. How are you? Good morning, everybody. Hi, Sherry. So happy to be here. Uh, yeah, very excited. I always love hearing from Sherry. It's so impressive to hear about all the so many haikus and and so much kind of creative production. I love it so much. And I love that she invites her children to join her and her like uh, um, artistic endeavors. It's so wonderful. Thank you, Graciela. I, I love your space too, but I haven't been there for a little while. Yeah, Twitter space. Um, actually, <laughs> it's a little bit difficult sometimes. Yeah, two of my concerts wrecked, and then it's really hard to get people back onto the space because if you give out the links and then and then people can't find it after wrecking, it's just gone. It's a little bit difficult, but yeah, I'm managing. <laughs> And I hope to come to your space. Um, yeah, some sometime soon. You ha you have to send me links. We also have Louis on space. Um, Crypto guide with Louis. I mean, if you ever want to talk about NFT, man, that's that's the guy if you need to learn. I've been following his journey um, into it, and he's he's producing and creating and making his uh, graduation album. And I just you know like it's again. I think everything is a process, and people do things their own way. But I love meeting creative people. And I just sit there and, and like go, wow, I wonder what this is like. It's like, you know, I'm, I'm, I got, I started a metaverse construction company and I'm just sitting here like, I want to build this business. And then like the other day, um, cause you know, Sherry, I've been trying to get Sherry to come on here, but then the other day I was like, I don't know. I, I don't I wasn't even thinking about Sherry. That's the funny part. All of a sudden, like I saw this, this image, this metaverse image, like that, like these, these pictures you can get. Not picture, but it's this object. So you buy different objects and you put it all together and then becomes, and then, then you upload to the platform. And I saw one and I was just like, oh my God, look at this. It's like an amphitheater. And like in the middle of it, like this little baby grand piano. And I'm like, you know, the person I can see doing this is Sherry. <laughs> so I asked Sherry, and she's like, she goes, am I coming to your space on Monday? I'm like, yeah. But what do you think about playing in the metaverse? <laughs> she's because I thought about that, but I don't know how would that work. I'm like, I don't know either. We have to like, we would have to program it specifically when someone sits on the chair of the piano in the metaverse, their hand would have to come up and start playing. Because usually when you sit, it, it, there's a hot spot, you can sit down, but it doesn't. But that's going to be the, the next, our next conversation down the road. Because I really feel like I could, if I could bring you into the metaverse, I'm bringing Graciela, she's her. Her book, her book launch is going to be um, next month. It's going to be um, pre-sale slash book launch. You know, it's it's kind of a different idea. Um, we've been talking quite a bit about it. Um, you know, I come from the old school of like, you know, I worked at Saks. So when I learned a lot from working at Saks Fifth Avenue and selling, and, and it wasn't like selling how many, you, how many sold things you sold today. It's more, you get graded based on how well did you execute a promo as far as pre-selling, meaning you get people to commit to it. You pull their items, you put it aside. And on that day, you ring, you charged, you charge the credit card and then they come pick it up, but then they get gifts and they get all kinds of really cool stuff. So it makes it a really incredible experience for them. So, and then I'm thinking this year, I was like talking to Graciela. I'm like, I noticed people do do pre-sale, but do they do different things? So I have a, 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 a met, I call it a multiverse because it's only one because it's the one that I, I, I built, but it's, it fits like 60 to a hundred people. But all it is, is just a conference room with a cocktail area and two big round table for 10 people to sit. So I built that. So Graciela's going to use it, but then Graciela, I just like, I don't know. I just, Vicky and I was talking. It's all, I'm blaming on a lot of people where I'm at today, okay? You know how it is, how you meet and you talk, and else you, next you know you're somewhere. So last night, 2 o'clock in the morning, I had a glance of my coffee shop. 
and I was walking around and I had to pick up what's wrong with it. So the coffee shop is really cool. We just got to finish building the wall on where the window is. But um, but in the corner, there's an empty space. I want to put a piano in there too. But it's really interesting. It's a coffee shop slash my co-working space. So Graciela, we might be doing it in the coffee shop and then live stream it out. Um, and then there's screens everywhere. I mean, there's, we can put anything on the walls. But I think for your book launch, because I told her I'd help her with it if she let me use her launch as something that I can write up for a service that my company is doing. And um, and it's a new company that we're, we're in the process of forming. So she said, yes. Yeah. So with a pre of her book, you get to go to an event and actually get to meet her and talk. And then she will, on the day of, of her actual book launch, she's going to sign the book and ship it out to you so you'll have it you'll be one of the first people to get it um it's it's i think that's the i feel that i'm feeling i feel like this is going to be the next way of people how people would shop and buy um and connect and they'll collect the books and the videos and the music and everything because they went to an event they got to meet the um the curator the author before the the actual product came out and then they connected and talked so and I'm gonna be honest with you, this really brought me to like Michael Kors. I have one Michael Kors fan that he had given me. I was his makeup artist for one fashion show and I repped a thousand dollar cream de la mer cream on all his model. And him talking to me, even though I was working it, I I loved his brand. I didn't even, you know, I'm, I, this is a while ago, like or in his early days, but he was new and he was one of the newest um, people at Saks and he had this beautiful um, bathing suit line. And, I mean, I don't think I would never ever remember that except when I look at that fan that he signed for me and he gave it to me before his launch of his bathing suit line. I think it's, that's an that's an, another incredible story. And then another one is Francois Nars, my old boss, Francois Nars, who is a photographer. He launched Nars Cosmetic. I was one of his second uh, makeup artists. And, uh, so in, for Saks, it was Saks Boca and Saks San Francisco. He did a book launch in 1999, and people laughed. Okay, they're like, "Oh, who's going to buy this coffee book of these men wearing makeup and all these?" But it's, they're like famous people wearing makeup and wearing all the different things. And it was it's called X Ray. So he had a party, and um, his party. He didn't even have the book yet, by the way. He didn't even have the book printed up yet. He only had like a few pictures that he picked. He printed up the one, the like the cover, and then a few, a couple more. And then he sat there and he signed these books signed them and then that was your gift and then you pre-sale you bought you put on hold that book and you had to buy something else to be able to get a so i have that but he signed it specific to me because i was i set up the whole event and it was very successful and talking to graciela that's what inspired me so graciela i'm sorry i went on this long winded story why i think every creator should set up a pre-sale event let their followers and friends come visit and also let them promote it and then let them talk about it. So Graciela, the mic is yours. Thank you. Yes, you did go on a very long rabbit there. But Sherry, uh, I know that Tanya is kind of vis making you visualize our next event so that you know what she can do with your own book. So needless to say, you're obviously invited. We still don't have a date at a time, but I hope you can join us and it'll be so much fun. And everyone else in the room, I'm so excited, Tanya. You are amazing. Oh, I think we I'm should so do it kind of like too. slash a birthday party too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah, I would like to come. Just let me know. Which month will this be? Next month. Oh, okay, sure. I'm still in New Zealand. <laughs> Yeah, it's gonna be next month, April. and um, the the yeah, which is this this March, so yeah, April is next month. So it so the 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 coffee shop would be done. So guess that you can pick which where you want to be at, but we can um like the conference room will hold a lot more people. The coffee shop would be more of a comfort and for the specialty, and then we'll live stream it out. So yeah, I'm looking forward to that. Yeah. Go ahead, guys. Yeah, let the mic is yours. Yeah, we, you and I need to catch up this week because I'm doing a giveaway as well. I have the modern day hippies merch that they want to give away, and I'm excited for them. So, yeah, we will talk. So, on the giveaway, you can do it like um, you can do a drawing. This, okay, we'll talk. I, I have a whole idea now. <laughs> you can do a whole campaign on it. <laughs> 
And also we have to make a QR code where people can pre-order. We'll talk about that too. I'll, I'll tell you how. So, um, so Sherry, I was just thinking like um, mm -hmm. for the events. So in the metaverse, um, Louis, he's performing to, in, in the metaverse before. But I think one thing good about it is that I feel that you can reach a bigger audience, but also make it so unique. Um, not too many people are doing that these days. I just, not yet. I think once they get more comfort and they, more people are building, you'll see a lot more different things happening. Because, you know, I, I just think everyone in the future, besides having a website, they will have their own multiverse so that they can bring their clients over. That's where they'll be. That's where their avatar will be. And then people will come visit them during the, the office hour. So... So the having a concert there would that be a live event or would it be so? Oh yeah, it would be all so live. People, so people can access it later, or is it just like one off thing? Oh no, no, I'm, no. It's just like like going into a video mm -hmm. game. You just each person has their own avatar. Um, so you can upload your own picture. You can create your own, and then um, yeah. But she wants to know so if, if there's a replay available. Oh yeah, well, we're, I'm gonna live stream it out. The problem with the metaverse right now is you can't live stream into the metaverse and out. So what we would do is um, I would curate the event. So I would definitely have a couple videos played um, before the event and people get together. Just like just like when you go to a cocktail party, you know, you get together, we all stand around and talk, we sit at a table, we talk. And then the speaker, you know, the main speaker starts and then they go to the front and then there's a whole screen and everything. So. On that, for, for yours, for the music, you can come in, you can play. But the thing is, we have to, as a, a pianist, I'm I'm just now got obsessed with, like, what do I do when in the metaverse world with all these? Because they have, like, all these, um, like, cello, violin, like, all of them, like, they, that you use. <laughs> I'm trying to figure out how that's done. I think you can program it into each item, how it's being done. So for you are just the piano. So I just wanted to see, like if you sat on the piano seat, would your hand go up and and play, you know? Because you'll be playing from in real life and it will go through. And because, you know, it, it's just like a social network. It's just speaker and camera. And if you're on, on a desktop, your camera can be turned on. But overall, that's how it's done. It's the exact same thing as being, being on a social audio, but instead of staring a flat screen, you're looking at a room and a space and you're walking around and you don't need glasses. You just need a tablet, a phone or a desktop. I mean, it's great if you have a VR glasses, but for you, you can just turn on your microphone and play. Uh, you know, if you're on a desktop, you can turn on your camera, but um, you can just use on your phone. And if you wanted to um, have your, you know, do a, a, a concert with your children, you can do that too. But the, you, I think you guys have, would have to be you can probably do it with you being there and just having you having the music played from your microphone because it's in your house. I think that we can do that too. Yeah, I've recently got more microphones. <laughs> now I'm actually, well, maybe not through this space because it doesn't seem to be picking up any signal. Just just my, from my phone. <laughs> um, I'm actually running five microphones these days when I... Yeah, four Rode microphones. So I've got two room mics, two piano mics, and a dynamic mic picking up my voice, which is probably not <laughs> working right now. <laughs> yeah, I would like to figure out how to. But um, yeah, the problem with Twitter space is just the the quality, <laughs> the sound quality is it's only mono, so it's not the highest. Uh, well, I I think it all yeah. depends on like I take the. So the way I do is I screen record the actual spaces. So, but I, my computer that I use to screen record is, a, is my designer sp computer. So it has, it's an M1. So it's pretty powerhouse. So if I use that computer and then I restream it all out again, um, and then on the replay, it sounds so crisp. Like I have, yeah. I, on my StreamYard account, um, it's just, just that on that one account, I have 350.7 hours recorded on just for that one um, because these are the ones that I live stream and this is all these ones I've done on, since I've been on Twitter spaces. Mm -hmm. So with that, and then I turn around and use those and I cut those in little snippets. So it, it sounds really good. I don't really pay attention to, 
to the recording of the Twitter spaces. Like today's space, I'm going to try a new thing just to see. I'm going to restream this. I'm going to clean this up right away. I'm going to restream this out into all the social network instead of doing it at the same time. I want to see how well that would do. Yeah, I, I've actually been experimenting myself with uh, different platforms and yeah, just just last last concert I used a stream yard and <laughs> finally I was able to push out the live streams. But then you know, like Sony claims this and that on Facebook Live. That was a bit annoying. They say we're going to mute your part part of your video now. <laughs> so Yeah, yeah, they did that to me. They they um the video that I did for you, the live stream, that's mm -hmm. the one. That's the one that Facebook took down. They said that really? I was copyright infringement and that I <laughs> used someone else's. And I'm like, yeah. if you listen to the thing, you know it's, it's actually being played by an uh, actual person. So, Graciela, yeah. uh, the mic is yours. Yeah, I wonder if you had any comments about Elon Musk owing Amazon S3 a lot of money for storage. Yeah, he's he's actually taking down all the lo the the recording of the Twitter live actually. The, 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 so if you want your recording, get it. And you know, I, I usually get wow. it anyway. So, but yeah, they they're he's cleaning up the because that's it's a lot of money for storage. So, but I don't know about about if he owe, they owe money if. That I don't even. I've been paying attention to the banks, so I haven't been paying attention to Twitter. I've been paying attention about the banks being shut down in America. I've been, but Graciela, can you tell us a bit more? That's why they're um, cutting the fat because they owe money to Amazon. Cloud? Oh, I don't know enough about it other than the astrology of this week resembles the astrology a few weeks ago when we had the first like Twitter um, joke of a fiasco. Yeah, I, I when he took over and such and accounts being um discontinued, suspended and stuff like that. So that's all I know. I just wanted to well, that happened to you. me once <laughs> when I, I know, was so Sherry, you were so heartbroken when you disappeared for like 24 hours. <laughs> yeah, it was like, oh, so weird. They didn't even tell me why. And later on they told me that I was using some kind of automation to and uh, to follow and uh, to follow people or something but then I was always like I had to uh, maybe uh, um, follow a few so I can add new people because they put this at uh, 5,000 threshold so I've been struggling with that for for months now so I couldn't add new people even if I wanted to or follow them back because I'm stuck at 3,000 and a few and and then they won't let me get past 5,000 and maybe three so it's very wow. strange. Yes, wow. That is very strange. Did you write them back and tell them that you're, you had to tell Oh, them? I did. That's, that's how they, I got my account back, but I was not very happy. Like there's no explanation. And then they just decided to, yeah, suspend it permanently one day. And unless you fight for it, but uh, it's just, I, uh, I, I saw a lot, a lot of people had to fight and for no reason they just get suspended. So it's, yeah, I guess it's an algorithm thing, but even so I, I was, I had to unfollow people, right? So I can add new people. But yeah, you, I want um, to, I, I want to follow there's something wrong with Twitter says that as far as the algorithm, I feel like they backdated the app. That's how I feel right now, the way mm -hmm. the app looks. Um, Vicky, the, the mic is yours. If anyone want to ask Sherry some questions, um, it's about 11.03. We start a little late, so we're going to um, 11.15, and then this will be restreamed out at 12 o'clock. And I'm yeah, happy just to play a piece or two. As well, of course, my goodness, we're so up. Oh my god, sure, so please, uh, who, who is speaking? Please go, ahead. yeah, yeah, Vicky. The mic is yours, and then after that, Sherry, um, I'd love to hear some music. Thank you, yeah. I was just saying, Sherry, you're not the only one who has limited problems with Twitter, so you're not the only one. And yeah, I love your music, I've been following you since last year, so yeah, keep going. And um, what you. who inspired you to play the piano? Was you inspired by anybody Thank in particular? You. Yeah, it was funny. It's so frustrating. I, I actually said my February concert was going to be the last one that I streamed 
onto the space like full concert and last time uh, and then uh, in the March concert I tried Twitter live which seemed to work and I don't know I haven't I haven't checked the recording yet did they actually mute anything but I think that's probably like a Facebook thing was you inspired by any Sherry to like play music when you were younger um yeah yeah pianists like uh Horowitz I really liked at the time that's how I was introduced to Scrappy's music actually really yeah he's yeah listening to his recording over and over again and hoping that I can play this one day it's so very inspiring and and then later on I for with all these concerts I've been playing I'm just like exploring different composers and by different themes and I kind of take my audience on the journey so last concert was Sati's music because um maybe his music maybe only about two pieces are really well known like the Geno Titi and Nocian that's about it but I actually managed to find about 40 pieces of his to curate and I'm very proud of that and some of them are so funny there was one that does Zoe joined in as a narrator and um yeah the second movement uh, out of three was all about promotion this piece is actually even got a funny title it's called a, a bu bureaucratic sonatina <laughs> and yeah I invited three philosopher friends to come in and talk about the uh, sati and the philosophy and music and love actually <laughs> we ended up because um, we, we, I also had a French narrator coming in to read some poems written by Sati and I wrote po response poems for for those um very short would you like to listen to them because um yeah, I like sharing my poems and I actually also like sharing my friend's poems. Um, let me find it. It's called Three Love Songs. And the first one is called Undying Song. You are the undying song that holds me strong. To you, I can only surrender, return in full splendor. In gray shadows, I dwell warmth from your spell you are the undying soul forever holding me strong would you like me to read one more from this set sail away i wish to sail away from night to day violent beating rain i can hardly contain so ready and eager for your gentle finger my wish to sail away as night turns into day. So that's the first two from the three love songs that I wrote in response to three love poems <laughs> by Sati, which I actually turned into songs, but these are the only ones known to have been um, ha having the words also written by the composer himself. So it's really fun finding about um, the pieces as I go along and I actually I played some Russian music and also two concerts of um, Ukrainian music last year and, and the beginning of this year for my uh, friend Sylvia Strove's um, birth birthday, 85th birthday. And the last concert, I also played one piece for my friend because I played it on the day of his 95th birthday. <laughs> a very famous composer in America that I actually went to visit and he was my best role patron by the name of Samuel Adler. Um, actually, actually a first generation pupil of um, Hindemith and Copland. So that's very special. Thank you. I, I, will you be playing some music for us? Yeah, I can play the very famous one that probably everybody knows. <laughs> So Sati was composing his music to be maybe elevator music, but uh, not all of them. Some of them actually sound very serious, and uh, yeah, he he's very playful. Some some of them sound like church music actually. So this one, the first GenoPD that everybody, almost everybody, should like to hear.
that was um, Eric Satie's first gym that he did. That was incredible. I'm sorry, but I have to like clap real quick. <laughs> that reminds me, one of my concerts, I had a co-host, uh, an emergency co-host, because my original co-host had Power Cat. So <laughs> somebody stepped in and he he actually put in the um, clapping, <laughs> electronic clapping, like at the end of every piece, sometimes a little bit before I finished playing the last note. So that was kind of a little bit funny. Yeah at the end of every single movement. <laughs> well, thank you so much for being here. Um, oh my gosh, you're like just, that, that's a perfect finish to our space. And I think, I, I, what time is it over there? <laughs> it's, um, let me see, there. four o'clock, 4.15 in the morning. <laughs> I got up like 2.30, but I didn't really want to get up. So it took me like 10, 15 minutes to get up. My alarm clocks were going off like a few times. And I would like to, before I go, I would like to mention that I'm doing um, a tribute. So um, this this year is Catherine Mansfield, a New Zealand writer. Well, probably the most famous one that actually made it internationally. She, um, she, uh, she passed away 100 years ago, so I'm giving her a festival as well so I've only just started organizing that that will be a film a featured film and that was actually made uh, in 2011 in New Zealand I think I'm going to promote that one and um, yeah I was talking to a photographer friend and we we'll want to do something together and I'm getting new pieces written by various New Zealand composers for this event as well so I'm going to invite scholars and yeah, writers, maybe even uh, visual artists and musicians to, yeah, to come and join in and celebrate this event together. And I, I wonder what it's going to be like if I do it online, but not just Web 2, but on Web 3. So, yeah, that's something that I can explore, I think. Thank you. It's going to be in November this year, but we'll start celebrating throughout the second half of the year with concerts. I love that. Yeah, that would be like really incredible if you did if you did a festival in Web three. Um, that would be at the same time as you're doing it in real life. So I think that would mm -hmm. be incredible. Um, as anyone, it's about eleven fourteen. I want to be mindful to everyone's time. I just, did anyone have any questions you would like to ask? Hey Tom, how are you? Good morning. <laughs> Tom is one of our members, by the way. Tom Furman. That's good. He must be on the uh, other line. And then good morning, Kay. Good morning, Louis. We had a great space last night. And Ami, go road safety. Good morning. Oh, and no more about that. And then uh, Nalaba, good morning. And also Micah, good morning. Oh, Mika, sorry about that. Good morning, everyone. Um, Sherry, thank you so much for being here. Um, any Thank final you, thoughts? I don't know if Graciela or Vicky have any questions before we close out the space. No questions. Thank you so much for having all of us. Yeah, thank you. And I was on Luisa's space a while ago. Yeah, as well. It's very interesting to talk about my ideas. Actually, the ultimate goal is to reach at least 1 billion people in this world with our poetry and music. That's Zoe and my goal. And so uh, uh, gradually, uh, yeah, working towards that. And um, yeah, through these interviews and concerts and yeah, we get our music and poetry. I think you're on your way because mm -hmm. it just um, knowing, you know, uh, different things as far as how to amplify, but I really think you're on your way. It's, it's so incredible in the time we're living now that, we have you um, here on a uh, AWCSF where our national has been founded in 1909 and you're here talking to us, playing music for us from New Zealand and it's like four o'clock in the morning and it's 11 o'clock over here. And then we have Vicky from the UK and Kay's from the UK too, actually. And Louis from up north and Graciela and I are from the same state. And, you know, again, you know, I think that's the connection part. No matter where you're at, we'll find connection. So I think your goal will be very attainable. Um, I'm, I, you know, like I said, I, I was inspired by you and 
not even thinking about it. It just came to me and then we started talking. So um, I really appreciate you for being here. And, and uh, Shay, right, before I have an we idea. Let, yeah, well, any final thoughts? Um, I know you, uh, we're gonna, I, I can't wait to see all your content you're creating out, out um, for your celebration. Um, any final thoughts for us? Graciela, you have some, uh, yeah. go ahead, Sherry. Oh, is it me? No, no, go ahead, Graciela, and then I'll, I'll let Sherry, Sherry and I would do it. Okay, I just have an idea because what you just said is like the best piece of marketing for this space right here and how amazing this conversation is. Every okay, so there you go. That's my idea. You should go back on the recording and snip that out. Yeah, this is all I'm I'm doing all of this to try and reach the next golden age. Well, help human beings reach the next golden age for arts. I, I hope. So I'm trying to combine all sorts of art forms in everything I do pretty much. So that's why I keep on putting those festivals and <laughs> without well thinking that well I, I'm I make no money or anything out of it. It's just a satisfaction that I'm just one step closer to my goal of um, creating the next golden age, I hope. Hmm. Well, because of what our conversation, I have this little corner in my coffee shop. I'm gonna tell my builder to put install a piano in there. Oh, let's great. see. Yeah, let's see what happens because it'd be so kind of cool that you um sit in the piano while all of us sit in the coffee shop listening to your beautiful music but um yeah so that's that's where i'm gonna definitely do that now and uh this will be live stream again at 12 p.m today onto all social network we're gonna try this to, this week just to see what the numbers look like but i feel like sometime live streaming it all out at the same time is great depending on what it is but certain things i want to be able to have the time for people to be part of and listen to and Sherry's stories is so incredible. Um, I feel like her story, because you know, it reminds me of like in the early days of mommy bloggers when mommy bloggers were not taken seriously back in 2009. So, and then I, that they never thought that the, the powerhouse of the mommy bloggers. And then I, and then I listened to you, and you're like almost like a mommy blogger, but in your own creative way. You you you're doing more. You're doing ten times more than the mommy bloggers did. Um, but I'm just saying that you have that powerhouse as far as your music and also your voice. And also the fact that you're taking care of your children and, and teaching them arts and creativity at the same time and sharing it to the world. And we're very blessed to have you here. And um, Vicky, before I shut down the space, any final thoughts from you? Um, Sherry, keep doing what you're doing and keep sharing that light to everybody. And what an awesome space, Tanya. You keep bringing them in, keep doing what you're doing. And you too, Grace, keep doing what you're doing. I keep following you. So yeah, love and light to everybody. Thank you. Tonya, I like the idea because I, I, that was actually also one of our goals to inspire the world for the families to create together because I feel that the world we're so much dependent on the schools to teach children things, but I think family, will, 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 yeah, we're the first teachers, right? So we, we can continue to be, we don't have to be just like setting them up for it, but yeah, we can create together and have fun together. Like Zoe and I, we write together and we play music together. And yeah, it's a thing that's not quite done so much anymore. Everybody's so busy these days. <laughs> but oh, that's uh, why I think that's fantastic that you're doing <laughs> this. Lockdown helped. Finding, you know, finding, rediscovering our time and connection to family, I suppose. Which is so important. I think um, more than ever, connection to family is so important. So on that note, everybody have a great day. We'll be back next Monday with another Empower Yourself Monday. Um, we'll have Laura uh, Basley be on. She'll be talking a little bit about herself and also her company that um, get their lumber from the Amazon um, in Brazil, which is a, an incredible, she has a whole thing about it. Um, and again, she was part of our Empower Yourself Monday last week for International Women's Month. And, and again, everyone, and then if you come across any one of our videos on YouTube, where we're, we're actually launching all the little short snippets now. So you'll see tons of Empower Yourself Monday snippets all over YouTube and Facebook. Um, please make sure you listen to it. It's only a minute. Share it out and um, let us know what you think. And again, everyone, have a great day. And if you have someone that you want to have us featured, please um, DM me or DM AWCSF or go to our website which is AWC and then
spelled out southflorida.org. And again, this is Tanya Schultz. We'll be back next week. And we appreciate everyone for being here. And thank you. Bye, everybody. Thank you. Would you like me to play one piece? And you can cut out any time. Just my favorite piece from movies. It's called Food Two for the Road. So Terry, go ahead and start the breathing exercise. All right, everybody, wherever you are, standing, laying down, sitting. Somebody has music or something on in the background. Um, close your eyes. Relax your face. Relax your jaw. Take a deep breath in through your nose. And exhale. Again, deep breath. Exhale. One more time. Inhale. And exhale. Relax your shoulders, your chest. Visualize the stress going down your arms out through your fingertips. Gently breathing in and out through your nose, relax your torso, your hips. Allow the stress to go down your legs, out through your toes. And you're completely relaxed, eyes still closed, gently breathing in and out through your nose. Visualize the air going in and out through your nose. That life force that keeps you alive. And when other thoughts come into your mind, allow them to just float away like clouds in the sky and go back to visualizing the air going in and out through your nose. And slowly open your eyes. And my closing thoughts for today. Help others quietly without expecting gratitude 
or rewards. Let the healing power of your spirit run through your hand as you reach to touch another, but say nothing to the person you help. Learn to give invisibly. Namaste. May the divine in me honor the divine in you. Thank you. It's me. Okay. Okay, give me.